right, let's begin on the back. Set yourself up so that you're, you're laying down. The feet are hips width distance apart so that the knees can fall in on one another. And you may have seen me just uh, put the center of the right hand on top of the navel and the center of the left hand on top of the right hand. And just let yourself settle into your breath a little bit. Notice the weight of the body, noticing the energy in the body, allowing it to relax. And again, just watching the breath. With your next inhale, think of just directing the breath maybe to the front of the belly a little bit more. And exhale. Maybe stay with the front of the belly here. Again, not letting the breath come up into the chest so much. Inhale, low belly, and exhale. Let that breath now inhale and widen out to the sides of the belly, maybe even the back of the belly, and exhale. Again, inhale, widening, breathing into the front belly, maybe the side belly, maybe even a bit of the back belly. Exhale. Stay with this breath. Again, more and more you can begin to comprehend or kinesthetically understand uh, uh, the quality of a balloon. Visualize a balloon in the abdomen. Inhale, let the balloon widen, expand, all parts, all sides. Exhale, right? When you inflate a balloon, one part doesn't inflate before another part. It expands equally. So next inhale, again, widening. Exhale. And when we're learning how to move the breath into the back belly and into areas that we're not used to moving it, just be real patient with yourself. Okay, good. From here, to let the left knee come into the left hand. Use that as a bit of a lever to bring the right knee up. And just give yourself a little squeeze. From here, you'll let the arms float to about 90 degrees. and. What you're going to do is with the knees sort of magnetized together, bring them over to the right, counterweight the arms to the left, and just start to move from side to side. Again, as the legs move, the arms move in an opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And let the head follow the knees here, just for a few repetitions. Think of that long, deep front line from the toes to the top of the head as you know, staying in unison, head following the knees, nothing really being disturbed so much in the back body, breath again, wide and full. Good. And here you'll keep the knees together, interlace the fingers behind the back of the head. We'll do a few spinal rolls. So as you Traditionally know as a crunch, as you think of bringing the, the feet towards the sky and the elbows drawing in, I want you to let the movement happen from the spine. Let the flexion of the spine bring you up and the extension of the spine bring you down. Front spine opens at the bottom and closes at the top. So again, just in the spine, roll the spine here. Inhale, exhale. We've all done crunches, but I want you to emphasize the movement in the spine. Vertebra by vertebra. Good feet to the floor again, relax. Hands can find the belly and take a few breaths just to let the weight return to the mat and return to the earth. From there, you can lift the legs a little bit. Find your way into a seated position. You can roll the legs over top and come up or lean to one side and help yourself up. When you're there, you'll catch the heels out in front of you. Let the knees draw in. So uh, like a, uh, just from there, we'll, we'll explore Navasana. So 
tugging on the feet a little bit, lowering the body, just gently, just to a place where you can feel uh, supported and then coming back up. You stay with that variation, or if you're working on the second variation, the knees can draw in here, round the back, let the head go. Find the weight of the sit bones, and then again, knees together, maybe the legs extend, boat pose. Finding a place that's comfortable for you, maybe lowering a few degrees and drawing everything in. Keep hugging towards the middle of the body. From there, knees come in, round the back, breathe into the body. Okay, take your time uh, setting up here. Here you're going to find the knees underneath the hips, hands under the shoulders, and tops of the feet are really active. Again, feet can be together. Bring the weight back, uh, heels towards the bum, and then round the back as you come forward, tug on the feet, and think of opening the vertebra here one at a time until you get to the top of the skull. Like a whip here, now again, sit bones move you back. Relax back, and as you come forward, it's from the feet, and gentle, 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 one vertebra at a time, opening. Right, the head is the end of the whip. The heels are the handle of the whip. And again, tugging and coming forward, lengthening the spine. Head's the last thing to come up. Be really gentle here. It takes a long time to uh, build any uh, you know, real fluidity in the back body. So years for me, and uh, to be perfectly transparent on this day, I'd actually felt a little bit tight in my back body. And you know, you just gotta move a little differently those days. Here, child's pose, widen the back, breathe into the body. Let the head go, relax. On your next exhale, you can come up. Maybe a brief Vajrasana, and then we'll make our way to the, to the top of the mat as you're ready. Here we find Tadasana pose, so the mountain pose, widen the toes, let the feet begin to plumb towards the earth. Explore the feet, big toe line back towards the inner heel, feel the whole circumference of the heel. Pinky toes are wide and there's almost a lifting to the center of the foot over time. As the weight moves into the feet, the arms can come up, inhale, exhale, lower the arms. From the weight of the feet, again, the inhale allows the arms to lift. Exhale brings them down. One more time when you're ready. Right, we'll move through one, Sturi Namaskar A. So inhale, arms can come up. Now just think of the hips moving back. Exhale, folding forward, bend the knees as much as you need to. Your next inhale, you'll lengthen the spine gently. Maybe look up a little when you're ready. The exhale brings the hands to the floor. Find the hands, bend the knees, hop or step the feet back. Inhale, come forward into high push-up, hands under the shoulders. Exhale, lower two inches off the mat, low push-up. Inhale, front spine opens, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, downward facing dog. You really want to feel like a wedge here. Feet moving towards the back of the mat, hands moving towards the front. They're not moving, you're leaning. Leaning from back to front. And from there, with those rooted areas of the hands and the feet, then the belly can become Gently drawn towards the spine, but not in a way that is tense, in a way that contains the energy in the body so that you can move the breath more into places that might be stuck. Shoulders, hips. Let the head go. When you're ready, exhale, bend the knees. Hop or step forward. And find the feet, inhale, lengthen. Look up a little bit, exhale, fold forward. Uttanasana. From the feet, inhale, reach the arms forward, lift up, reach up, 
exhale. And shake the legs out a little bit. And we're gonna move into Utkatasana, thunderbolt position. So I just changed my pro to change to the profile view here so you can see as we bend the knees, it's just the shins that are gonna come forward a little bit. The spine doesn't change. Let the spine be relaxed. Make it the shins coming ahead of the toes a little bit. And here we're going to explore Samana Vayu, the space of the navel, and Prana Vayu, the space underneath the solar plexus. Let these areas very gently draw in, just to contain, again, the posture. Inhale, arms can lift a little bit. And like a thunderbolt, this is a very powerful position. Let the weight to the feet be there. Spine is neutral, head is long, no big tension in the shoulders, breathe up into the back. Keep connecting down into the earth. Draw the energy from the earth through the feet up into the spine, inhale, exhale, release. Good. Moving again to the top of the mat. Find Tadasana one more time, and from here you'll weight the right leg and begin to slowly lift the left leg and start to step it back. Take your time as if you were moving underwater, connect to the feet, notice the back foot land, notice all parts of it. Right knee is bent almost to 90 degrees, and hands can find the hips gently. I like to find the right hand on the hip here and then fold forward, bringing the ribs towards the thighs. Let the head relax, let the arms hang. And now from the feet, just let the spine roll up. Good. You might find the hand touch the right hip to draw it back a little bit. From there, the left arm can move forward. And maybe the right arm joins. Virabhadrasana 1, Warrior 1. Feet are heavy. Posture doesn't have to grow any. Just let the, let the back be long and wide. Let the feet be heavy. Inhale and exhale. You'll step the left foot forward. Right away, notice the weight come down into the left, fit, both, left foot. Both feet are even here. And pause, relax, and then shifting the weight to the left foot. Slowly, let's step the right leg back. Again, like you're moving underwater, let the foot take its time coming back. Again, coming up a little bit, moving the left hip back with the hand is nice, and then bringing the ribs towards the thigh. Drape the body over the left leg. From there, the weight into the feet allows the spine to roll up. Left hand can find left hip, right arm reaches forward a little bit. Not so much that you're in tension in the back, or overly distorted, right? Other arm can join at your own timing. Notice the gaze is soft. Think lots of space in the shoulders. Take a deep inhale and exhale. Relief. Shift the weight onto the left foot and bring the right leg forward. Tadasana, relax the arms. Take a few breaths. I'm gonna prepare for Uttanasana here. So inhale, arms reach up, and then exhale. Just the hips move back, and we're gonna fold forward. So Uttanasana is a deep forward fold. The peace fingers can catch the big toes here if you like, and just tug on the big toes a little bit. Let the head go. Breathe into the back. Be active in the feet. When you're ready, release. And on your next inhale, arms will reach forward almost to 90 degrees. Really use the feet to come up, lift up, reach up, big inhale, exhale, hands to heart. So we're gonna do that one more time. This time I'm gonna show you the Parhastasana variation. So feet or hips width distance apart. Find the weight in the feet. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, 
Again, just the hips move back, and this initiates the fold forward. Keep the wideness in the front of the hips. If you're moving deeper, you place the hands, the palms of the hands under the palms of the feet. Bend the knees as much as you need to wherever you are. First variation or second variation, again, let the head go. Breathe into the back. Feel the weight of the feet and almost there's lots of action here it's like you're plugging into a light socket right so the feet are tugging on the hands hands on the feet when you're ready you come up release the hands at the same time inhale lengthen reach up exhale relax shake the legs out and let's come to the top of the mat again so once you find the feet, we're going to shift the weight just into the right leg and you're either going to place the left foot on the calf or if you have the opening, you can place the left foot higher up on the right thigh. Frikshasana, tree pose. Inhale as the right foot becomes heavier, grows deeper roots, the tree grows, the arms can come up. You should feel eventually really relaxed here. The gaze should be towards the horizon. Exhale, release. And as you bring the left foot towards the earth here, really notice as it touches the mat, shifting the weight into the left foot, allowing the weight to sink. Really feel the transfer of energy. Let the left foot get heavy. That makes the right side light. And again, just repeating whatever variation you took on the other side. Inhale, lifts the arms. Okay, so for balance, if you're exploring your balance more and more, pick a spot out on the earth, about six to 12 feet out in front of you, and just try and focus on that spot. This is the drishti. This is a simple balancing exercise, a focus exercise that can help with your balance. That worked for me for a long time. Eventually the gaze can come to the horizon. And again, one more full breath and exhale when you're ready, release the body. So again, right foot comes down. We'll shift the weight into the right foot. Try not to get too distracted. Left leg is gonna come up here. We're gonna move into Grajanasana, the eagle posture. So the knees almost stack here. Left leg comes over the right leg and eventually the, the left foot might hit hook behind the, the right calf. From here, the right arm to 90 degrees and left elbow underneath. Mm -hmm. And I always remember that by the foot I'm standing on is the right foot. So then I'll bring the right arm to 90 degrees. Same arm, same foot and wrap the left arm underneath the right. Hands connect. Be wide in the fingers. Let the fingertips be active. Inhale, exhale, release. And shift the weight onto the left foot. Again, notice the change in, in position. Notice the weight shifting to the other side. Again, right leg comes over left leg. Left elbow to 90 degrees. Right elbow underneath. Again, breathe into the back. It doesn't matter how far you go in this posture. Again, I'm showing you the fuller variations. If that's not available for you, just go as, as far as possible natural don't push it have to employ relaxation in all of these postures relaxing the body should be the first principle good release when you're ready find the feet let the body settle from here we'll just widen the legs so if that means turning to one side of your mat and we're going to look at um Parsarita Paratanasana. So first variation, this is a wide-legged forward fold. So here I want my toes, I want my feet quite wide. You can't see how wide they are, but they're almost as wide as my mat. And I want the toes to point in a little bit more than out and kind of like big ski snowplow techniques. Those big toes are really rooting down to the earth and I'm connected to all four corners of my feet. First variation, my hands can be at my hips on the inhale, lengthen the body a bit. On the exhale, begin to fold forward. So 
just by taking the hips back some. Big opening in the back line from the tips of the toes, underneath the soles of the feet, around the heels, thinking of that connection, continuing up through the calves, the hamstrings, around the bum, all through the length of the back body. Right up around the skull too, let this back line, uh, it, it finishes right at the brow line. So as we inhale, slowly you can come up. Let the arms relax, exhale, next variation, inhale, arms come to about 90 degrees and exhale, same thing, use the feet, let the body move forward. Keep lots of space in the hips if the hands are available to touch the ankles or sides of the feet, great, let the head go. Remember Samana Vayu, the space around the navel, Prana Vayu, the space around the solar plexus, and all the way up the spine, there's this gentle gathering. So try not to lose that awareness. It's as wide as the legs want to go, keep drawing in. Deep inhale, maybe the fingertips touch the earth, lengthen the skull, exhale, fold forward again. Hands can be on the earth in line with the toes, fingertips in line with the toes. Let the head go. Big inhale. Exhale. On your next inhale, lengthen the spine. Look up a little bit. Exhale, fold. And as you're ready, inhale. Come all the way up. Exhale. Walk or step or hop the feet to the middle. Nice. Shake the legs out when you're ready. So we're gonna move into a, a squat position, Malasana. So I like this, I make these slanted blocks, which give me just enough little height underneath the heels. And this can be achieved just by rolling up the back of your mat and placing it under the heels. So just to give yourself a little bit of height here. Yeah, inhale, arms might come to 90 degrees, and exhale, again, all you're going to do is bend the knees a little bit. And inhale, come up. We'll do this a few times. So next inhale, arms come to 90, exhale, bend the knees. Maybe a little bit further. Again, stay really active in the big toes, the pads of the toes. Exhale, come up. And you just go as far as you can go here. We'll do it a couple more times, and I don't want you to push. The knees can be in a very funny place some days. And, and for me, the knees changed a lot over, over a long period of time. So you just go as far as necessary. Good, inhale, arms come up and exhale. If you have the ability to get to 90 degrees or further, then eventually, you know, you might feel quite supported with um, the heels close to the bum and just, just sort of resting with a long spine. Good place to get um, and inhale, maybe coming up. Yeah. Give yourself what you need. You can always do this with a chair behind you, with some blocks stacked up. You know, I like to be able to offer support. A chair is good. Um, so you just go as far as, as the spine and the, the knees and the opening is there. So second variation, if you're moving forward, you can practice this one. If not, you repeat the last one. So here the feet are together, big toes almost touching. Inhale and exhale, just making your way down. You should have the full squat available to you if you're trying the second one. So here the knees can come apart a little bit and just to create enough space to bring the body forward between the legs. And then if you like, you can try and wrap the arms around and maybe hooking behind the heels. So a big, big malasan here, squat. This is, a, this is a big opening in the back body, so, so be careful. There's nowhere to go. Take a deep breath. A great prep for bakasana, the, pr the crow pose. So from there, you find the hands out in front. Think about shifting the weight. Maybe one leg lifts, maybe the other. Play safe. You're ready, you can come down and maybe find your way back up. So 
we're, we'll do it again. And, uh, you know, if this, if this is new to you, then that's, that's okay. Maybe, you know, even just getting the hands on the earth, even just getting to a deeper squat can, can feel like a big win. So, um, be real safe with this posture. Nice to put pillows in front of you if you need be. I always say in my class, that's my, my number one joke. You never would do this one at the top of the stairs. So coming forward here again, same variation, the elbows and the knees really connect. So that's more the knees catching the backs of the arms. And I might just lean or lift the leg, lean into the hands a bit and maybe lift one foot, maybe lift the other foot. Yeah, and if you're starting to get it, then really think about beginning to straighten the arms. Good, big inhale, exhale, maybe shoot the legs back for all you Ashtangis out there. Good, and eventually downward facing dog. Let down dog really reset the spine. And as you, as you move now and prepare the body to relax a little bit, I'd like to use a blanket. We'll start to set up for Shavasana, our resting pose. Just take your time. Eventually, you want to unravel the body, let the body go. Let the palms face up, traditionally, underneath the heart, let the feet fall open. Let the back be long on the, on the mat. Let the breath return to its natural rhythm, there's no more control in the breath. Think of all the gross muscles in the body becoming softer and all the very specific finite muscles in the body. Let them, let them go. Think about the quality of the face. Let the face be relaxed, the mouth, the lips. Even let the eyes settle deeper back towards the, the skull. Pratyahara, non-attachment. This is one of the hardest postures for me personally. It's just taking the time to be completely at ease or watch where the unease is to give myself this space and time in the middle of the day or in the morning or whenever I need it. Many First Nations folks speak of returning to the surface of the earth, the forest floor when they're feeling ill and allowing the earth to heal them. Good. Stay as long as you like. When you're ready to come out, you can roll to one side and eventually just help yourself up. You can find your way back into a comfortable seated position, whatever that means for you, and just closing the practice in a sense of reverence for the teachings that have been passed down. Hands can come to heart center. Yoga mudra is the salutation forward. And it's just a, a thankfulness, a, a gratefulness for the practice. I'm grateful for this little guy. Thankfully, he brought me my phone, which apparently had a 30-minute timer on it. So we've been practicing for about 30 minutes. And at the end, we say namaste.